Okay, we'll give that a try. Nice to record these things, but sometimes things don't go well. You know me? Who doesn't know me? Raise your hand. I'm Lee Lowry. Do you see two or three people kind of getting up, seeing if they can sneak out? Yeah, they know me. <laughs> okay, we're going to do steel design this semester. I like steel design. It's the first time I didn't lie to you, really. I taught you 221, and I told you you could find the reaction on the right hand end of a simply supported beam with a concentrated load in the middle. And I remember you asked me, who's going to put the load in the middle? I said, well, it's not easy to get it there. It could be this way, that way, a little bit. I said, does that change anything? I said, no. Lies, all lies. <laughs> Magnitude of the load changes, and it's various depending on who put it on there and where they put it. And it's, uh, yeah. Then we went to MC over I, P over A, VQ over IT, and uh, I said, you said, how close are those numbers? I'm right on the money. Lies, lies, all lies. You say, well, have you ever found a piece of steel that didn't have that, you know, the right amount of strength? No, no, lies, all lies. Nice thing about this is, this is truth. Now you say, well, you lied to us in three classes, and now you tell us you're going to tell us the truth. Well, yeah, that's pretty hard to do, but it really is. I'm going to take into account all the variation in the loads, all the variation in the strength of materials, all the variations that they find in the analysis methods themselves. That's all taken care of because they're really going to build these things. None of the things you did before, they were good for training, uh, but, you know, and we still use them to determine the numbers we're going to get now, but we're going to put variations on them to take into account. The load may not really go there. The load may not really be that big. Sometimes when that load's on there, the other load won't be on there, and vice versa. Uh, differences in the strength of the materials. If you use an A36 steel for something, you get different stresses permitted if you weld it versus if you poke holes in it for bolts. As you might imagine, you remember we talked about stress concentration factors? really didn't do much with them, but just say we had a stress concentration factor and the stresses were different. That's all taken into account in this class. Because you really are. You're getting ready now to go out the door. And I don't want them to fall down. So, um, Wes Cummings is our main go-to person. He will be in room, I think it's 030D, that's what my map shows. But if you go out of the downstairs, go out the stairwell, down the stairwell and turn right, it's the first door on the right. He will be there at these times and he will assist you with 446. He's also going to be working with the 445 and the 444 people. Have his email on there? Yeah. So you can email him if you want to know when he's really going to be there. Is he going to be there at a certain time? Something along those lines. When is he less stressed? Or when can you actually get in line or not have to stand in a long line? Looking for a book? Click on one of these. It'll give you a, a relatively inexpensive book. A lot of the aggregators, something like this one here, will go out and search every bookstore they've ever heard of, including eBay and Amazon and that kind of stuff, and tell you which books, where they're going to sell you one that's le less expensive. We've been using this for a while, so there ought to be some used, one out, used ones out there. I always like used books. They always got good notes in them. They already got the answer to some of the problems written down in the back there. Second book you're going to need is the Steel Construction Manual. This is the text. It's one of the best. There's about four or five that are one of the best. As long as they pick from one of those, I never do care. 
like I say, I, the longer we run on that one, the better it is because it's got everything we need. It's brought up to the new codes and the new specifications. And, uh, this is the new specifications, steel construction manual. Uh, this one you get... This one you can get at the bookstore or here. This one you ought to get through us, or through AISC. Is the thing someplace on there? Looking for it's a GUI textbook. Somewhere down in there it says how to get this AISC book. Don't see it offhand, but it's around here somewhere. You got to have a code. You got to email me, and I'll send it to you. Catalog description, course objectives, ABET learning outcomes. Everybody has, I take it, finished, passed, 345, structural analysis. Going to have three exams, ABC or AB of final. They'll count 30% each. Oh, yeah, the syllabus is at, you can get this at uh, Lowry, dot Tamu, dot edu. Just go down to the bottom and you click on 446. What's available to you to get this class behind you? Me. The teaching associate that we've got, I think he's in there 20 hours. 446 list server, file server, grade server, all of the stuff that we give you information on. Click there and find out what all we've got available. Homework problems and pop quizzes assigned during the semester. Mm -hmm. Best I remember, all that says is the syllabus has all of these things numbered. So, for example, this is assignment 25. One problem in that particular set. It'll be worth 10 points. There's one got a couple of problems. be worth 20 points. So if you want to know, well, what you really should do is you should put the assignment number as well as the problem number on your homework so we'll know what you're handing in. There'll be pop quizzes. I'll label those. P1 slash or minus 13 for January the 13th for the one we'll have today. That's assuming we have one today. So when you take a look at your grades out there, when I finally get them posted on uh, eCampus, you'll know what that heading means. Uh... AISC specification codes and standards. There is a piece of the book that we were just talking about, this manual. It's free. You can click here and you can download it. It also includes the shapes database. For an example, it tells you the properties of a W10 by 52, something like that. It doesn't have a lot of the user's aids in there that you really need or we wouldn't bother. We would just download the free part of it. But the specifications themselves telling you what they expect you, how they expect you to analyze the structure and what it has to do, that's free to the public. But all of the other tables and things, which is about half of it, that's uh, where you pay the money. It's a cheap book. I think you pay 120 bucks for it as a student. It'll double in price immediately whenever you're through with it because everybody else is paying about 300 bucks for it. I'm not telling you ought to sell it, but the only book I know that's worth more when you buy it than when you, hand it in, or when you hand it in is more than when you buy it. Free AISC membership. You can fill it in, sign it, and email it to them. They've got some benefits to being a benefit, and you get to write that on a resume that you were a student member of AISC. Computer software, you already know Excel, 
a lot of the Excel, a lot of the pro homework problems you work, you can probably set them up in Excel to check your work and also to help you work the next problem, which is similar. EES is Engineering Equation Solver. That's the, one of the niftier programs I've seen. I highly recommend you get it. I think you'll use it a lot. You go over to the computer center right next to the place that's got the weather thing on the top of it. What's that called? The building right next to the thing that's got the weather thing on it. That's what it's called. And uh, I think if you click on here, it tells you where that is. And uh, they'll take them a thumb drive and they'll put it on a thumb drive for you. And you can use it. It's really simple, straightforward. It's very much like Excel. The only problem with Excel is you say, uh, this is the, and in this cell you put the steel, and this is the uh, length of the member, and you put the length of the member in there, and this is the, and you put it in there, and this is, and you put it in there, and you put all this stuff in, and then in this cell here you say equals that plus that divided by the square root of that times this to the e to the so-and-so, so-and-so, blah, blah. Then you don't really know what you got, but, you know, there it is. And then you put in some numbers and you check it out. EES, you just write down the equation. A is equal to PI, on, for them it's a function, times D raised to the 2 power. It's just that simple. Then right underneath it you say D is equal to 1.4 inches, or 79 millimeters, and hit the enter key, and it gives you the answer. It's written down in equation form. It's not a matter of checking this to make sure that you're going to the right cells or anything else. It's really slick. Uh, example video solutions for selected steel problems. I don't remember which ones, but if you have trouble with something, look in there and see. Some of them uh, got asked questions about it so often, I just went ahead and made a small video of it. My old exams. You're welcome to know what I have asked people in the past on old exams. Uh, you will see that disappear in the middle of the semester. It never fails. Because the only one rule about using those old exams, all those copyright illegal things, is one of you will bring one of them to me and say, I don't know how to work this whole quiz. Work it for me. Show me how to work it. Don't have time. What? 20 quizzes times 5 questions per quiz times 70 students, you know, divided by you'll be there an hour. And uh, my life's too short. So what I will do with that person is I will show them how, and then I'll just delete those. They're more trouble than they're worth. I don't get anything out of them anyway. I just have to come up with a new quiz every time because they're there. What are your chances of making what grade in this class? I don't know now. Maybe if I looked at your 221, 305, 345 grades, I might be able to predict it. But all I've done with this is gone back to all of the semesters I've taught this class and uh, found out if you made, for example, an A on quiz A, and an A on quiz B, what was your chance of passing, the, or what was your chance of making an A, or a B, or a C, or a D, or an F in this class? And so it'll say something like 90%, 6%, 2%, you know, whatever the percents are. So hopefully that'll help you decide when Q drop time comes around. I can't tell you in your case what'll happen. I can't tell you if you'll make 100 on the final. But if you have an A on quiz A and an A on quiz B, I got the percentages down. If you got a B and a C, I got what they did in the past. Tutoring and using the manual. I don't know if the tutor has a solutions manual or not. You might loan him yours. <coughs> but I got one. So if you say, well, I didn't want to buy one, I wasn't sure it was legal anyway, come by and you can look at mine. If you got a real question on one of the homework problems, I'll be glad to let you take a look at it.
I'd rather you, rather than me sit there and just spoon feed you, hey dummy, 12 inches and a foot, I'd rather let you look at the solution manual and then you go through there. And when you don't see it, you, I say, look again and dig out where you have deviated from the truth. You're welcome to do that at any time when I have office hours. My office hours are back here. Office hours go. Office hours, office hours, office right there. Access to the CE apps server. So if you want to run one of our computers from home, they were having some trouble with that. I'm not sure they got it fixed or not. You may have to walk up here in the rain if you need uh, one of the programs off of the computers in the lab. Design aids, uh, they are pretty ratty, really. What I did was when I would be grading your exams, you'll have different problems. And not only would you have different problems, but you would have different ideas about the problem. For example, I would ask you to design this beam to resist lateral torsional buckling, and you put the load here to solve for this reaction and this reaction, and then you drew the, sh the shear diagram, and you said it looked like that. You do the moment diagram, so it looked like that. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with this shear diagram and this? The original load is a uniformly distributed load. This was 80 kips. This reaction you got right was 60 kips. This was L over 2 and L over 2. This one was 20 kips. And this is what you gave me for the shear and moment diagram. What's wrong with that? Your diagram, whoever it is, left the 80 kip load rather than putting the uniform load back on it, and the shear diagram ought to come up, and it ought to look like this, and like that, and then this diagram ought to look like this, and like that, yes. But, you know, I got some points from you. I got a few because you did that. Minus 60 problem was only worth 20, so you can see that was a real <laughs> aggravation to me there. But then I got to know if you made any new mistakes. So that's what these things are. These things are, if you're trying to work a problem that's got lateral torsional buckling on it, it's something that I put together so that I could put in your new numbers at each step. In other words, if you went halfway through and then made a mistake, I could just go halfway in this thing and hit a button and see what you should have gotten from then on. But like I say, they, they've gotten a little ratty over the years. You're welcome to take a look at them if you want to. Summary of the pages we covered last semester in class. I think I got a print out of those. Um, it's, when I say last semester, the truth is it's getting, it's also getting kind of ratty. I was using uh, the fourth edition instead of the fifth edition and, a, and an old steel code. The things are still about in the same place and it's still useful. I just haven't had time to update it. If you do, give me a copy. Uh, RISA, that's how you can run a, a structural analysis on a structure and find out the moments. Mass Tran is the same thing. It's free. Seating chart, I need to know where you decide you're going to park, if you would, next time come and have a seat, and I'll uh, hand out a seating chart, and you can tell me where you're going to be. That way, uh, if you need a seat up front because you have uh, vision or hearing problems, uh, you can go ahead and get it, and we'll put you there. Junk, junk. Uh, an excellent aid on how these things work. Junk. There's some good stuff. Kahootic, uh used to be a prof. He passed away. Uh, he's got a whole bunch of example problems. So if you're looking for some uh, other problems, for examples on how to work something, he's got a ton of them. Typical point disc deductions you can count on. 
ASCE publications that are free, AISC Shapes and Database, I think I already mentioned that earlier, and uh, nine examples. More example problems that would be very similar to the Kahootic example problems. It's just somebody noticed that they were out there and they do make good example problems for studying for a quiz. Class expectations, click on it and read it. General information regarding the format for the exams. I'll just say that in this class, I hope by now somebody has made you purchase and use lined, ruled, gridded paper with AISC written all over the front of the page only. I don't care. I'm past that. You can write on the front. If you write on the back, be sure you put a note on there and tell me. Look on the back of them, on your exam page especially. I don't care if it's uh, the back side of a bunch of paper you got out of a dumpster because that's all you can afford, fine. Where to get help? Either me or the tutor. One of the two is about it. Grading. I think I already mentioned uh, the percentages. Attendance. Illness. Make up exams and what you have to do to prove up that you should get one and what you have to do to get it scheduled. Academic dishonesty, and I don't know what that is. But it says click here, so that will probably be on the quiz. It probably says uh, 42. What is 42? Uh, what is it? The answer to life, that is correct. So there's some other people in here that waste their time with Guide to the Universe, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe. Okay, so here's typical, the date, class number, what we're going to be doing and covering. We will if we can, we never can, but you know, this is what we're hoping. Pages 1 through 11 today, chapters 1.1 through 1.5. Here's what a flipped class is. Uh, I'm going to, there's a video on this. The reason these things happen is because I'll give an exam and I'll say, design me the lightest wide flange to do so and so. And out of 70 people, at least 40 come up, uh, what steel do you want me to use? I say, yes. And you say, well, uh, well, well, can you be a little more specific? I say, no, I, I really never understood that, you know, but they always seem to get the right steel. Well, yeah, the book tells you what steel to use for a wide flange, and it tells you which one to use for a channel, and it tells you which one to use for a bar and a plate, and that's all very carefully specified. But if you were texting, how do you? You were texting that day, and I asked the other guy, I said, are you texting? And he said, no. I said, what are you doing? He said, playing a game. Well, that's even worse, man. <laughs> Please, at least text, you know. You're getting something done. Um, but he wasn't listening that day. He didn't, didn't know how to find out which steal, and so it does. It costs you. Well, there's a video on that material. A flip class is one where I've seen so many people crater and burn because they didn't do that that I went ahead and just sat down and told you how to do it again. So it's important. Whether you view it or not, it's your business. It says be ready to take a quiz over it. And if it's not a pop quiz, then it'll, I can assure you it'll be on one of the major quizzes. Assignment number two. So-and-so, so-and-so, we don't go to class Monday, another flipped class. I think that was on materials, and I think that one was on, yeah, just the general. No, this is the material specs. This one says material specs, too. That must somebody, I just must have copied that. I'm pretty sure that's not material specs. I bet you that's the layout. Check that, but it doesn't matter what it says, click on it. This is really a mess. There's quite a book, got a lot of information in it. It 
is broken up into parts, chapters, sub-chapters, party chapters, chapter parts. I mean, you name it, it's got it in there. It's got specifications. 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 Here's specifications on steel anchors. That's on section... Focus that somehow. I-8... On page 16.1-102, back on the grade pages, that's something different. 16.1, let me see, 3B. Wow, look at that. Now, that'll never happen in 500 years. You see here 3B, tensile strength of steel-headed stud anchors. 3B, shear connectors. So this is a commentary on this part. And finding it is the problem. It's there, but if you don't know where to find out where the material strengths are for the various kinds of steels that we use, or if you don't know how to find the equation for tensile strength of a steel head stud anchor in composite components, well, you got problems because the quiz goes kind of fast. This gives you the layout of that, I'm pretty sure. And on, and on. You will notice that the most used words in this class without comparison be the syllabus. You say, gee, how ugly, how rude. Well, I read the syllabus. There you go. Why? You watch. I guarantee you, I promise. Watch, somebody's going to come up and say, when is quiz A? And I'm going to say, I don't know. I don't know when quiz A. I'm not sure if they've decided yet when quiz A is going to be. I don't know. But I am taking the class in reading, and when I get through with it, I'm going to read the syllabus. The second most common is, what does it cover? I don't know. I don't know. I have no... What can I bring with me? I don't know. I don't know. Read the syllabus. It really is. It's all there. After all these years, everything is there. Spring break. Come back alive. I need the money. <laughs> Quiz B. Final exam. There's your last day to Q drop. You'll notice, if you happen to look on old notes, you'll find quiz B has been moved up quite a bit, trying to get two quizzes behind you so you have a better shot at whether or not you really need to Q drop or not. Next time I'll bring that. <clears throat> Somebody's sitting there, so put your name like this. Here's the sheet that tells you what materials to use. It's in the book. It's on page 2-48. You'll notice that pages 16 point something have hundreds of pages, like 16.1-101. That's because that's the specifications. And they're all in chapter 16. 2-48 is pretty shy of chapter 16. It's in chapter 2. But uh, it tells you, for example, there's a thing called A36 steel. It has a yield stress guaranteed minimum of 36. may have more than that, but in general, it's right around 36. It has an ultimate tensile stress at which it breaks around 58 to 80. That's a pretty wide range. If the guy does not or the lady doesn't tell you that they have tests on that batch of steel that will guarantee you it's got an 80 for F sub U, you will be forced to use 58 KSI. Some steels are sensitive to how thick they are rolled. They take a big old chunk of steel and it's just full of all kinds of little cracks and problems with it. If you roll a wide flange that looks like this out of it, 
you have rolled a lot of those little problems out, but it's still got a lot of them in there because it's so thick. That is, for example, a piece of A242 steel. I, J, J, J. For shapes with a flange thickness greater than two inches only, you must use 42 for the yield and 63 for the ultimate. If, on the other hand, K, K for shapes from one and a half up to two, it gets stronger. The reason it gets stronger is because during the continued rolling, you roll more of the junk out of the section. You line up all the little cracks parallel. Now then, instead of just being all over the place, more of them are getting to be like that, where they don't influence you as badly. And when the thing is rolled down very thin, you get to use 50 for the yield. What is that? What is that? Well, yes, <laughs> he says 70. Yeah, it's a 70. What is it? Ultimate. That's correct. That's the ultimate strength of the metal. The reason we need to know those numbers is sometimes we base our design on stretchiness. What is that? A strain diagram, thank you. See, when I pick on you and kid you because you said it was a 70, a lot of times I don't hear from you for the rest of the semester. Don't, don't let that happen. What is this? Modulus of? Very good. Modulus of elasticity. What is that? Yield stress. We give it the name F sub Y. And you and I like sigma sub Y because it makes the architects think we're doing something really special and they don't like Greek symbols. But, you know, when you get into this code, it's called F sub Y. And instead of sigma ultimate, we are going to call this one F sub U. We will have some material, some things, some pieces of structure that once you get into this region, they don't break. They, nobody dies. But it bends so badly that you do have injuries of all the people trying to get out the door at the same time. And not only that, it may have bent so badly they can't get out of the door. And that's bad, because when the first guy says, I can't get out the door, you know, well, then they start going out the windows. Don't do that. If it's just yielded, it's okay. But we don't want that to happen, so we'll use this as our design criteria. If we're talking about something else, and we're really saying that under these conditions it might break, then we'll probably be going on up to this for our design criteria. We'll still have all of these numbers down in here where everything is really safe. It's just when it gets horribly overloaded, unexpected and unintended, but it has happened, then we want to make sure that we don't go above this number. So this is one of the things that uh, there's a flipped class on it to give you what I just told you again. The result of today's lecture, once I get it all, if I can even get it done, I just lost the 305 lecture an hour ago, so I'm not sure this one it says it's recording, but it won't go on a hard drive, so we'll see. But I will put the video of it on here. We'll go to... Huh. Well, here we go. You go to here. Probably what you're going to actually see there is last year's stuff because I haven't done anything this one, and I'll have to take those off and replace it with the ones we do now. You'll see the video, and you'll see the class notes. So that if you really haven't been able to make class today, there's still hope. Uh, here are the notes. Here's real. Here's an MP4 for apples. And if you want to download the real video, that's usually used for people in India who watch this about as much as you do, surprisingly. 
and here's the material that was covered. And I don't know what we've what we're going to get done today. <clears throat> someone take the class for me that day they didn't know how to do this sometimes things just go bad everybody thought because the light when lights went out we weren't going to hold class no 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 all right I don't know where the, where this is but it's right underneath my picture. Thank you. So this is what you get when you click on that. Uh, it tells you how to obtain this user's manual. Now, if you're going to go in with somebody in the other class, just buy one of them. You know, that's certainly okay. Used one, that's okay, too. The used ones are not. If you buy a used one out there, it's probably going to cost you more than a new one because you, when you sell it into the used market to the general public, you know, is going to probably pay a couple hundred bucks for it. Yeah, all you got to do is email me, tell me you want this code, and I got one for everybody, and uh, I'll mail you yours, and you put it someplace on here. I don't know when you sign on. See, this is if you're going to mail it in. You just go to the website, you give them the code, your code, and you tell them a credit card number and they'll send it to you. Charge you more if you send them a check, I guess because they had to process the check. This is what I was talking about. This is where I, one semester, kind of summarized what was going on. If you wanted information on tension members, growth section, Net section effective areas. They were in the manual on page 16.1 dash 26 through 31, but like I say, have sadly haven't had time to update it to the 14th edition, and I haven't had time to update it to the fifth edition of Sugui. But they're around there. They're better than nothing. So if you need to know uh, the nomograph for effective links. It's on the commentary as opposed to in the uh, in the main part of the manual. Then so you pretty much pretty close to where it's at. There's your text. I'll leave it for you to read. Structural design. Probably say, well, that's what you told me to do in 345, where you, where we did structural design. That's probably true too. It's good stuff. You ought to know it. An economical structure requires the efficient use of materials and construction and labor and all that kind of stuff. Also, the use of money. But uh, read it. Figure one shows a truss. Boy, this old boy is really getting down to the bottom, isn't he? Yeah, that is a truss. And he tells you they're either intention or compression, and you can idealize it as uh, just little straight lines with no thickness to them. Supports are represented hinges and pins. Come on, man, if you even need to read that. Uh, here's a little bit of truth. Uh, here's a column bolted to a big old footing. What is that uh, called? What is it? Uh huh. What's well, an anchor? Yeah, but I mean, would you call that a free support, pin support, fixed support, pinned? Okay, it's the only thing I got. Pinned is right. Um, interestingly enough, if you just bolt it down like this to just a piece of piece of concrete, you can't move it around. You probably couldn't hardly move it with a tractor. But uh, you get some really good wind loads on these things, and it acts like a pinned connection. So one of the things is the code will require that unless you do, I don't know what, this for the plate and this for the footing and maybe some piles down here, 
they're not going to let you call that a fixed end because they found out it's just too easy for this thing to do a little bit of rotation, which in effect turns it into a fixed, I'm sorry, a pinned condition. Up here at the top, you can make this pretty much fixed. You have to probably put another steel plate in there, weld it in, a diagonal plate to reinforce that web, and then if this one rotates 0.6 degrees, that one will probably rotate the same. But it does cost money to do that, and a lot of times people, you know, will not bother with it. Long pinned. Loads. We've talked about loads all over the place in 345. 345, for example, you had beams and beams. Uh, usually there was no beam here. Obviously, I wrote another one in there. Oh, thank you. I should know. I got a big old mark there. Holler at me when I do that. Uh, no, I guess that beam is supposed to be there because that beam is taking half of the load as his fair share and half of that load as his fair share. And so that's the load that goes on that beam. You should be able to turn a uh, pound per square foot load into a pound per foot load on a beam. We have live loads and dead loads. Live loads are generally considered things that don't stay in the same place. They can move around. That would be people. Or that would be chairs, not the chairs you have. Those would probably be considered part of the dead load when you're working the loads up on the structures. The live load could vary, like truck loading. If they do vary, then you may have impact. Depends on the structure. You may. We don't consider impact in here. We assume that live loads are, in effect, static loads. They just can move around. Wind loads is considered a live load. You already learned how to get pressures on buildings in 345. Earthquake loads we don't do. Not that hard. It's just one of the things you don't hardly have time for. Most of the loading come from ASCE, American Society of Civil Engineers. They did this even though they weren't really a specification group. They did such a nice job of it. Almost everybody just refers to them. This is a typical page right here. Uh, Dance halls and ballrooms, 100 pounds a square foot. Libraries, stack rooms where you really have a bunch of books, 150 pounds a square foot. Surely we got, there we go, this is you, 40 pounds a square foot. Corridors in school. Above the first floor, 80 pounds a square foot. First floor, 100 pounds a square foot. That's in the corridors. So if you go outside there, you'll find there are deeper beams underneath that than you'll find in here. Now, I say deeper. They may be the same depth, but the beams in here probably go from this wall to that wall, and the beams that go across the hall are shorter. So even though they may look the same side, if you go down to the basement just to check it out, you may find they look the same depth, but they are stronger because they have more applied load according to the codes. Now, there are things called codes, and there are things called specifications. The specifications don't have the force of law to go with them. They don't, they don't have any penalties. Codes are the things that have the policeman along with them. So, for instance, if you design something in the city of Bryan or College Station, they'll have a code. They may refer to a code that's just a standard code. In fact, then they'll just say, we want you to design to this code, except we want this little change. The code itself will call to meet the legal requirements of that code, you are supposed to use these specifications. Specifications will tell you how to do it, and the 
code then refers to specifications for plumbing, specifications for electrical, specifications for steel design, and so on. So these are these are actually specs. Um, impact loads, machinery, building codes, design specifications. They have these different international building code. They have uniform building code, standard building code. Most of these have gone out of business. They got tired of having three different ones, so they all got together and hashed out so they could have a single code. These are now kind of going out of style. already talked about structural steel. The structural steel, this is A36. Here's a high strength steel. 